sunny September 29th, 2022, here at Trenton, New Jersey. See a lot of Amtrak workers here working on the rails as there was a derailment by a SEPTA train here yesterday at 11.30 in the morning. Train of Silver Line of Fours. Looks like they picked the switch in this area. Arriving into Trenton, based on the time, it was 11.30, that's when they come in from Philadelphia. But they're hard at work, the cars are gone, the track looks like it's cleared, but they're watching the condition of the track and making reparations on it. Track four is closed, as you can see, there's a barricade. New Jersey Transit trains are turning on four. Got a train coming. Got a Keystone arriving from Harrisburg at Except the Silver Line of Fours were blocking track three, and things were kind of messed up yesterday, but they got the cars out, thank goodness. And Scepter's running a modified schedule to Philly. Well, here you can get a better view of the who would work on the switch. 172 is coming from Washington, New, New York, Boston. So they're sounding the warning horns. The train derail right over there, because I remember from photographs the backdrop of that stone culvert overpass. So it was derailed there and was blocking track three. And they're working hard on cleaning up that switch. They got the W flags up. No, that doesn't mean that the Cubs won. That means there's a train coming. like portable whistle posts. Look out for the workers, and there's lots of them. Here comes 172 arriving on one. And 172 is departing for Boston at 943. For now, they're going to be using track one here at Trenton for trains both ways. It's hopeful that they'll get the work done during the course of the day and all tracks will be open. Just observing the tracks, they, they look in pretty decent shape. All right, here comes a cell at 2151, Boston to Washington. He doesn't stop here. He's going to be running on three, or two rather. arriving. Well, 
a SEPTA train that just arrived from Philadelphia is heading for the yard. This is track two. So I'm a little confused about how the tracks are numbered here. I thought uh, track two was the track immediately to the left of one, the express track. There we got some track equipment parked here. Got some kind of a work train backing up here. Engines classified as a GP15. We got a set of Arrow MUs coming in from Morrisville that'll be the next train in New York on transit. Is 3834 departing for New York with these beautiful GE Arrow MUs. I'll make a point of something after he leaves. He goes in a rush. They still have get up and go for almost 50 year old cars. Love those cars. Now, you might wonder why I dislike the SEPTA Silverliner 4s. Well, I'll tell you. Being completely fair, the Silverliner 4s, they're just as old as those Arrow MU cars are. About 50 years old, I don't think they've been rebuilt. But gotten a half a century of operation out of them. I guess what I dislike about them so much is I've gotten spoiled on the Silverliner 5s with SEPTA. You know, that dazzling paint scheme, the get up and go, those nice K3 LA horns, and of course the rail fan window. I've had the pleasure of rail fanning the entire SEPTA system from that rail fan window. And um, give me a lot of great joy. I've had SEPTA employees give me accolades for making the videos because it helps the employees learn the territory. But getting back to the Silverliner fours, the cars just don't look right. They were built with that partition for a center door that they never built. It looked like it was a kind of a makeshift stopgap, but jerry-rigged effort at making a car, and it just doesn't look good. It looks like some fifth grader drew a picture in art and he flunked. And also the appearance of the cars, it just doesn't look good. And they have those S2M horns, which don't intimidate anyone at all. I think I could make a more ominous sound blowing my nose than listening to those horns. But uh, if those cars were full length cars and they had Westinghouse AA2 horns on them, I'd probably like them a lot better, like the old Bud Silverliners. And here it comes into the station to make his next departure for Philadelphia. I mean, these Silverliner Fives look pretty good with the with the blue and red stripes on them. They used to be bare years ago. And that that center door that isn't. It's just between that and the lousy horns they have, they just look and sound atrocious. But. They're durable. The Silverliner 5s, admittedly, as much as I hate to admit it, probably won't last nearly as long as these cars did. They don't even make railroad cars from Honda I rode them anymore. You know, and they have their own sets of problems. Crews don't really like them. Rail fans do, but never the train shall meet us. It's 
a deadhead headed for Morrisville, most likely. We'll stick around here for a while, catching the action. And then I'll take a train and I may rail fan the Northeast Corridor between here and Philadelphia today. Beautiful day. All right, coming on one at 10.02, we got an interesting movement, a New Jersey Transit yard move powered by a diesel. A Jeep. That's a who's who of New Jersey transit equipment right there. Between the diesel, the electric locomotive, and the types of passenger equipment, including a couple of Arrow MUs on the rear. Undoubtedly, that's some kind of a shop job headed for Meadows. And he's filling the atmosphere with smoke here, accelerating. Well, they got a beautiful day to do this work. Imagine if it was raining cats and dogs. Approaching at 1014 is Amtrak 644, Keystone, Harrisburg to New York. The whistle posts up, they'll be making a lot of noise coming in happily. didn't make that much noise with the horn considering there were workers all over the place with the W signs up. Well, approaching at 1028 is Amtrak 56, the Vermonter, Washington to St. Albans, Vermont. Gonna be switching from two to one here to make a station stop. Amtrak is using track one for all of their trains, it seems. Soon 141 from Springfield, Mass to Washington should be arriving. And 2153 from Boston to Washington, the Acela should be barreling through also. Workers congregate on that switch. You'll note the GP15-1 back there, dropping ballast on number four track. At 10:36 a.m., arriving on track one is train 141 from Amtrak, and right from Springfield, Mass to Washington. Get the unusual perspective of seeing a Washington-bound train leaving from track one here at Trenton. It's got the class unit 
I'm sorry, 650. He's already got an approach uh, medium clear signal here. It's going to switch over to two and eventually to three. You can hear the bell ringing on that ballast train. It's backing up. This train is getting ready to depart for his next stop at Philadelphia. And our next scepter train is arriving also. Twenty one fifty three should be not too far behind this guy. Here's our next arrival from Philadelphia on SEPTA with those silver liner fours lacking in aesthetics. That hump on top doesn't do much to improve the appearance upon those either. Well, let's examine one of these Silverliner 4s built by GE. They, the fronts look very similar to the Arrow MUs on New Jersey Transit, also built by GE. When these cars were delivered to SEPTA, they lacked those trailblazing stripes on the front. They were rather bland looking. You know, the striping improves the appearance somewhat. They were put on early in the 21st century. Yeah, that hump on top just just doesn't look good. I mean, the, the Arrow MUs on uh, New Jersey Transit, they have the hump on top, but it's narrower. It looks a lot better than this does. Looks like somebody dropped a heavy weight on top of this car. And here, this uh, makeshift doorway. I don't know what they were thinking. I guess when they were delivering these cars, they figured Septo was going to have high platforms all over the place but aside from just a handful of stations back in the day everything was like 98 percent low platform so i don't understand why they built this i get a sudden urge to want to kick that in might make it look better i know there's like a partition where you can sit inside there feels like you're sitting in the waiting room of a doctor's office Plus, it's not exactly uh, comfortable for the back. I feel more comfortable standing inside of a mummy case. Well, I'm gonna take this set of equipment out of here. As he heads off to the yard to clear some space. They're really at a premium for track space here today because of that derailment. to sell at 2153 Boston Washington and a creeping by at 1044 looks like they are done the guy just lifted the barricade off of four well maybe the lifting of the barricade was temporary because his track equipment is approaching on four
glad the weather is good for them. <laughs> if he puts the barricade back up because there's a spot of ballast down there on four and I guess they got to work on that spot well I'm inside the silver line of four heading down towards Philly and we're in that area where the doorway should be but it isn't at least they have better seats in here. They recline better like the rest of the seats in the car. But before they were like straight up and very uncomfortable for the spine. But still, <laughs> I feel like I'm waiting for Dr. Kildare to come out and tell me how I'm feeling. Yeah, I'm on board SEPTA heading for Philly and riding the Silver Liner 4 and not entirely critical. These things can still move pretty good. So we're heading towards Levittown, our next stop. Yeah, my disdain for the Silver Liner Fours is mainly based on aesthetics. It's just uh, mechanically, I don't think you can question their abilities, but they are not attractive looking cars by any means. I guess I'm just spoiled rotten with rail fan windows. <laughs> I really had kind of a love affair with the Silver Liner Fives. They're problematic and not designed the way they were intended, but the rail fans aren't complaining, but train crews might. So, you know, while they're still around, I'll try to make the best of them. All right, I've been jumping around quite a bit today, but. Now we've wound up in the fashionable mainline district of SEPTA and Amtrak. This is the Wynwood Station, which was built in 1870. This is the Pennsylvania Railroad main line, in quotation marks, main line. Fashionable area between Philadelphia and Paoli. This is one of many historic stations on the line. And it's not on a nice sweeping curve. Many classic Pennsylvania Railroad shots have been made here. Gigi one's flying around this curve with Limiteds going out west. Well, I kind of figured I'd do a stand up. I really haven't done too many of them, but uh, sort of give you a little appraisal of what I've thought of SEPTA equipment over the years. I've been traveling down here for over 50 years and I've seen all kinds of equipment. Um, some are good, some are not so good. It's just, uh, but it's amazing. I started when I was about 15 years old. I was in a sophomore in high school, came down here and I've ridden them all. I mean, they were the Redding Company, Blue Liners and the Green Liners. I think they were built by American Car and Foundry and Bethlehem Steel. They were neat cars. Rode on them uh, up to Doylestown and Chestnut Hill, now Chestnut Hill East. Great cars, they rode well, they were durable. They had nice loud traction motors when they'd start up. They'd sort of grind to a start and they'd accelerate pretty quick. And they had, I think they were Westinghouse air horns on them. And uh, oh, I enjoyed them. I rode on them before they retired them with the SEPTA colors on them. They were really something special. They also rode the MP54s on the Pennsylvania Railroad out this way. And uh, the MP54s, they were I think they were louder than the blue liners. When they started up, they really ground. When they engaged the throttle, you hear that starting up. And they accelerated pretty good. And they had those peanut whistles, similar to the Long Island Railroad MP54s. Then there were the Pioneer 3s. I think there were like four of them on the railroad. And uh, they were bud built. They had electro pneumatic brakes, pneumatic brakes, and GG1 style pantographs. I don't recall if I ever rode on those, but I do remember their successor, the Bud Silverliners. 
that the Penzi and the Redding Company got. They were identical cars, except the numbers were different. Love those cars. I started riding them when I was in high school and stopped riding them when they retired them when I was 58 years old. And those things took off. They had nice stainless steel car body and they were just uh, awesome. And um, the oval shaped windows kind of gave them a, a speedy look to them and that stainless steel construction was really something else. It was really quite good. And we got a Philly bound train arriving, 325. 9534 set of those silver liner fours by GE I've already told you what I thought of them good mechanically but bad aesthetically although the front of these doesn't look too bad but that's about it Still have a lot of get up and go, I'll give them that. Continuing about the Bud Silverliners. They were the Silverliner twos, they referred to them in later years. But they were cool. They took off real fast. They, when they were at high speed, you could hear their traction motors whining at high speed. And when you were standing next to them, when they were standing still, the power plant under the car had a noticeable musical sound to them. You'd stand next to them and they'd go, so, never forget that. Love those cars. I'd say they were probably my favorite SEPTA car other than the older MUs. Then there was the Silverliner 3s, the St. Louis Car Company MUs, which looked like the Buds, but, you know, the they didn't have that ovular window. They had corners, actually, four corners, not quite the oval. And they had that left-hand side cab, which was reared. I think they were anticipating automated fare collection. And that's why they designed it that way, but it didn't happen. And uh, the power plant under the cars wasn't quite so noisy, but uh, they took off pretty good. And then there's the GE Silverliner Fours, which came in the late 70s, huge fleet of single and married pairs. Pretty much told you what they were like. I mean, I just wish they were a full length car with Westinghouse AA two horns on them. And I probably would like them a lot more because they would look a lot like the Arrow MUs on New Jersey Transit. And then the Silverliner Fives, I mean, what more can I say about those? They're sleek looking. I love the paint scheme on them. They take off like rockets. They have that nice K3 LA horn. And I love that rail fan window. It's just great. And then you had the uh, ALP44. They just had one of them. I've seen it a few times. The AEM7s. May they rest in peace on SEPTA. They were nice engines. They took off pretty good with a nice push-pull train. And now they got the ACS 64 Sprinters, which I hope to see on the main line this evening, a couple of them at least. And they look good. They sound good. Supposedly, they can substitute for an MU with their high rapid acceleration capabilities. So I've had a great history experiencing the thrills and pleasures and sometimes pitfalls of SEPTA. Go Phillies. They'll probably make the playoffs, but I don't think they're going to get very far. Doesn't inspire me too much when they lose a couple of games to the Cubs. My God. Well, a 343 approaching as a set of Silverliner Fives bound for Thorndale. I'm going to stop here at Wynwood. Beautiful day today. About 68 degrees. Had some really terrific weather. Unfortunately, the people down in Florida, the weather is exponentially worse. Lead car is 834. 
The 800s are married pair cars. The 700s are single. I love the looks of these cars. But not everyone loves these cars. They were supposedly, supposedly when they ordered them, they were supposed to have full width cabs, but obviously they did not. Some behind the scenes controversy behind that alone. to his next stop at Ardmore. Yeah, you'll note the catenary poles here are rather primitive looking compared to other parts of the Pennsylvania Railroad electrification. That's because this was the first piece of Pennsylvania Railroad electrification with overhead wire. It was completed in 1915 and it's amazing. These are over 100 years old. Well, here comes train 5336 from Malvern into Philadelphia at 402. Silverliner fours. They've been running a lot of them around the system today. On 9533 at Winwood, got off two stops later at Bryn Mawr. Gonna hang out here for a while, getting the Amtrak and some of the SEPTA push pulls here. to his next stop at Rosemont, passing the old Bryn Mawr Tower. Here's 5436 from Thorndale arriving. Grandmore is an important stop on this line, a lot of business. Once he departs east from here, he'll drop down a grade. Trains coming from Philadelphia look like they're climbing up out of a hole here. side bad sun angle here. Bryn Mawr has a nice railroad feel to it especially with this Bryn Mawr Tower. It's been closed since the early 90s it was closed due to a fire. Okay alongside the Philadelphia bound platform track number one here at Bryn Mawr. Station here is rather unremarkable it was built in the 1960s after the other one burned down. It's gonna get busy here pretty soon you're gonna have like four SEPTA train movements within about 15 minutes. 
Then approaching at 437, he's a little bit late, is 9551 from Philadelphia to Bryn Mawr. He'll terminate here and make a reverse move and go back as 5340. But there'll be other trains passing before he can do that. Switching from four to three. I think he's going to stop and let him off on the boards. Stopping past the signals, we'll be making a reverse move to go out as 5340. 50, Approaching now is 5240 from Malvern into Philly. He stops here at Bryn Mawr and then goes nonstop to Overbrook, hardly. And then 30th Street and all Center City stops. Silver Line of Fives. Stop Overbrook for him. Should have 95-91 coming in for Thorndale. He makes his first stop here after 30th Street. Well, here comes 95-91 at 4:43. He's got push-pull equipment. ACS 64 leading. He'll stop here. ACS 64 is a wild here right now, approaching his Amtrak 652 from Harrisburg to New York.
Off goes 95-91 for Thorndale. And those Silver Liner Fours should be coming in to make 52-50 out of here for Philly. You should see that switch move. Here it goes. And here comes that equipment of Silver Liner Fours making his reverse move, going into the station to pick up his passengers. Most likely, he's going to probably pick them up on track two on the boards. Picking them up on the boards on track two. Otherwise, you'd have to make a reverse move to get onto track one and go back east again. Easier this way, but a lot less exciting for rail fans. He's switching over to one, heading into town. And you heard that pea shooter of a horn as he came into the station. Well, approaching now at 501 is Amtrak 649 from New York to Harrisburg. Climbing up out of the hole in the ground. That's what it looks like from here. ago he stopped at Ardmore and he switched here from track four to three. Well here comes 7537 from Malvern at 510 Silver Line of Fours. The front of these cars don't look bad at all. They look a lot like the Arrow MUs, but that hump and that fake door in the middle, that just makes them look clumsy.
SEPTA still has that annoying habit of roping off the second row on the Silver Liner 5s. You know, they claim it's because of the pandemic, but things seem to be relaxed as far as the pandemic is now more than ever. So you'd think they'd go back to opening that up, but they don't. I think I may have to invest in a selfie stick so I can stick the camera between the headrests in the seat row in front of me. Might be a way around that problem. Otherwise, it's killing my arm shooting these RFWs. I think if I invest in a selfie stick that gets at least three to four feet extension on it, it might do the trick. I can actually sit in the third row and put the camera in front of the first row between the headrests and that little space there. I think that might be the answer to my problems. I'll do a lot of these lines over again if it works out. I got blocked almost. That was 95-93. First stop Wayne after 30th Street with another ACS 64 push-pull set. Approaching at 528 is a deadhead move bound for Philly of Silver Liner 5s. Well, you heard the beautiful K3LA horn on that Silver Liner 5 that just passed. I'll tell you, comparing the Silver Liner 5 horns to the Silver Liner 4 horns, it's like comparing the singing of Enrico Caruso to Edith Bunker. Well, here comes 9511 at 536. He terminates here. And he's dropping them off on the boards on track number three. Well, this guy is poised to make a reverse move back to Philadelphia, but he'll be doing it as a deadhead. First move for him. He's going to head west, maybe to Fraser. Well, here comes 651 from Amtrak, New York to Harrisburg. He might be switching over from four to three here. Stop Paoli for him. Here's 53-44 at 555. We'll take this back to Philly. More fives. Hallelujah.